Well, thank you guys for coming out tonight. Um, it's always an honor to minister the word. I'm excited about this message tonight. We're going to pray and get started, all right? Father, we thank you so much for your word, that it brings light and life and help and hope to us. We thank you, Lord, that you customize this message to every hearer here, that they will hear what they need to hear and take away revelation and understanding from your word. In Jesus' name, amen. Well, if you haven't heard me preach before, I'm going to warn you that I talk fast. I am a northerner. I've lived in the south longer than I lived in the north, but whatever happened when I was born there, it just messed me up for life. I have the weirdest accent ever. It's half southern, half northern. No one ever knows what I'm saying. So get ready to lock and load. And I do like it if people, you know, participate a little bit. And I need an amen corner, right? <laughs> so if you want to be in the amen corner, this is the sermon for you. Rob started a series a couple weeks ago called Wind Advisory, talking about the role of the Holy Spirit in our life. So I'm picking up at part three. And so, um, you know, we've lived in Tennessee, Oklahoma, and Florida, all of which are known for wonderful places that have storms with wind, either hurricanes or tornadoes. To be honest, to me, tornadoes are scarier than hurricanes, because hurricanes, you have like 10 days to prep. Everyone goes to the store, and if you live around here, unless you're like 30 minutes from the ocean, you know, it's mostly about the snacks and the TV, you know. So um, what happens is wind changes are due to a change in the atmosphere pressure. So why? Because the atmospheric pressure changes and that causes the wind. So just like the atmosphere and the natural around us changes, the atmosphere can change spiritually as well. And I've always heard them liken the Holy Spirit to the wind. And I remember even studying this in Bible school, but then I was thinking about it the other day. I'm like, I wonder why they picked wind. That's very interesting. So I researched it. <laughs> and so um, let's look at John 3.8. I'm going to skip around to several different translations. They'll probably have it on the screen for you. Um, so this is John 3.8 in the NIV. It says, the wind blows wherever it pleases. You hear its sound, but you cannot tell where it comes from or where it's going. So it is with everyone that's born of the Spirit. Well, that word spirit in the Hebrew and Greek, it means breath or wind. I think that's interesting. I worked in hospice, which probably creepy to you, but actually it was a very rewarding job just to be able to be there for people. They didn't know they were talking to a Christian on the other end of the phone, but I sure did. And so it was so, it, it's just interesting to me that process for people and how your spirit can be so strong and be what's keeping you alive. Like you decide you're sticking around, you're sticking around and they would decide they're not, they'd be gone in a day. It was crazy. But the spirit in Hebrew and Greek, is the breath or the wind. It's the breath of life. Isn't that interesting? Both a breath of air and a breeze are appropriate images of the Holy Spirit. So here's some properties of the wind. Wind is moving air, and this fresh air is needed continually for life itself. Even seeds often require wind for their dispersal and subsequent growth. Okay, you could preach a whole sermon on that right there, <laughs> but we're not going to. Similarly, the Holy Spirit is the presence of God, the source for all life. Wind has no material shape or form, right? It's invisible. You can't see the source or the destination of the wind. It's mysterious, unseen force. Nevertheless, its presence is known by its effects, right? When all your stuff starts blowing over in the backyard and you got to go bring it in. I think a couple weeks ago, I don't know, some storm rolled in. I thought we were going to get a tornado or something. My basketball hoop was bouncing back and forth. I yelled to one of the kids. I'm like, get down here. And then it just went away. But that wind was rocking everything in my neighborhood. And we were securing things in a hurry. So likewise, the unseen Holy Spirit can be experienced in a refreshing way. His presence is displayed in the work he does in the human lives by transforming, sanctifying, encouraging, and teaching. I liked this part. Wind is a powerful force. It can't be stopped, and it can't be controlled by people, no matter how hard they try. Likewise, the Holy Spirit is not subject to human control. The moving of the Holy Spirit is God at work. And we can cooperate with that wind 
Like they harness the wind now and they have energy they get from it. Or we can work against the wind, which we all know doesn't really work out, and it's really bad for your hair. It just doesn't look good. In Oklahoma, it was so windy there. I remember you would like do your hair, you go outside, and you just look like you stood in front of a fan. You're like, why did it even bother? So we can cooperate with the wind, or we can try to like work against it. And it's kind of like a sailboat. Think about how they harness the, the power of the wind. Sailboats of any kind, they're not going to move without wind. It's just going to sit there. And you might like inch along a little bit, and it'd be really painful to get to your destination, but you might get, you know, 50 yards or something with that, just the ripple of the water, right? But we need the wind of the Holy Spirit in our lives to move forward, right? So if we're stuck in a, a rut and there's no wind in our sails, we need to draw near to the Holy Spirit, right? Think about how much further you can go when the wind of the Holy Spirit is, when you have that connection with the Holy Spirit and you're walking in the Spirit, how far you can go and how much quicker you're going to get to your destination, you know, rather than with a paddle in the middle of the ocean. I mean, you can get there. You can get across the world if you want to, but it is going to take you a really long time, right? And so the Holy Spirit is likened to the wind. This is the fourth one. There is great variety in wind. It might be a soft whisper, gently rustling through the leaves of trees, or it can be like a hurricane, which we've seen uprooting trees. So we've been talking about how Jesus, well, after the resurrection, remember Jesus talked to the disciples and told them, listen, I have to go. And they're like, don't leave me. I can't do this. Please don't leave me. And he's like, you don't understand. If I don't go, you won't get the Holy Spirit and you're going to need him. <laughs> We're like, oh, awesome. Um, he knew that in order for there to be true multiplication of the kingdom of God, the Holy Spirit had to come. He had to. He had to be available to all. So he told him he had to leave because it would be better for them if he did. The gift of the Holy Spirit was given to us to equip us and provide a guide on the inside. So we can be led from the inside out. Now, that's not the way of the world. They're led by their circumstances, their feelings, what it looks like, their spreadsheet, their pros and cons list, all fine and dandy things. But if we want to get where God wants us to go, sometimes those things don't measure up. That's not even what you're supposed to do. On paper, and we just had this conversation with Kat and Andrew the other day, on paper made no sense. Absolutely no sense. Why would I do that? But then felt the prompting of the Holy Spirit to do it. What do you do then? You have to learn how to hone in and hear from God, right? It's just vital to our success. Our, we want our decisions to be based on God's leading. Our job is to develop and train ourselves to follow the leading of the Holy Spirit. And you pretty much spend your whole life figuring that out. <laughs> and once you think you've got it figured out, guess what? You just level up. It's like a video game. You're like, Choo -choo -choo, I got it. I'm the And then something else. You're like, oh, dang it. I don't got it. And then you're like, oh, I didn't even know this whole room was there. Great. <laughs> Shoot. But it's a good thing because God's always trying to enlarge your capacity. He's always trying to bring you into a place of increase. And the only way to do that is following the voice of the Holy Spirit. It's the only way. Amen? So the gift of the Holy Spirit was given to us to equip us and provide us that guide inside. And it's like a GPS system. Now, my husband and I use the GPS system differently. He wants to know the whole map and all the directions, and da, 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 but he's not going to remember the next step, but he needs to hear. He's like, now, where am I going? What am I doing? I don't even understand the map. I'm like, north, south, whatever. Just tell me what to do next. <laughs> yes. <laughs> it's my turn. He picks on me really bad, so it's my turn. <laughs> so, but I noticed that it always tells me a mile or two ahead, so if I just listen, totally good, Right? But we have to fine-tune that hearing. We so often want to make those decisions on what we can see. And we're developing our spirit man to hear from God, spending our whole life desiring to follow him. Because why? His paths are good. In Psalms 25, 4, it says this. I, love, I think this is why David was called a man after God's own heart. 
because he said this, show me your ways, O Lord, teach me your paths. It's not just about the the to-do list. He wanted to know God's ways. His ways help you to know his character, right? When you know his character, you actually know his ways. It all works together, right? When you know God is good and something bad comes, you don't say, oh, the Lord must have sent that. No, because that's not his character, right? And that's not his way. That's not the way he does things. So you know what tool and what equipment to use and what to do in a situation. Like, oh, I always use John 10.10 as a litmus test when something comes. That says that the thief comes to still kill and destroy, but Jesus came to give you life and life more abundantly. So when something comes, and I'm not sure about it, I'm like, well, is that going to give me life and life more abundantly, or is that going to rob, steal, kill, or destroy? Well, if it falls into the rob, steal, kill, destroy, I know exactly where that came from, <laughs> you know, and I know exactly what to do. I'm going to take authority over it and get her done. Get on the high heels and <laughs> do some devil stomping, right? It'd be awesome if they were red, but they're not tonight. Sorry. <laughs> so we are learning the ways of God. So how do we develop this? How do we train ourselves to understand how to hear from God? Here's one thing. Our pastor in Tulsa said this. He's absolutely my all-time favorite teacher on this subject. I've never heard anybody hold a candle to him, to be honest. We need to train ourselves, this is what he said, to understand how he might lead, how he won't lead. He's not going to lead you to cancer. Write it down. And how he will lead how he might lead, sometimes you're like, oh, I never thought about that, but that could be God, <laughs> you know? How he won't lead and how he will lead. We have to recognize and develop and fine-tune our ability to follow him. How do we do that? Jude 120 in the Amplified says this, but you, beloved, build yourselves up, founded on your most holy faith. faith. Make progress, rise like an edifice, higher and higher, praying in the spirit. So in the original text, that phrase actually it meant be being filled. Be being filled. That sounds pretty active, right? So like here you are. Hold on, I gotta figure out how to work this thing. <laughs> I'm gonna put this down. Here you are, glass half, not even half, quarter empty, <laughs> glass half full. And this is your life, and you're good with it, right? But God said to be being filled, right? How do you do that? You keep praying in the Holy Spirit. It's part of filling yourself up. Because guess what happens? Life happens, and things get knocked out of your cup. You have a really bad day. You get a horrible doctor's report. Somebody you know passes away suddenly. There's been a lot of not good stuff that's happened in the last year. To everybody, has been affected in one way or another, whether it's financially, losing people they love, just all the things, right? And life happens to knock that out of us. That's why he says, be being filled. Keep getting filled up. Why? Because it's going to get poured out in life. (laughs) And it's going to end up less and less. And if you don't keep filling it back up, pretty soon it's going to be like this. And how's that going to work for your family? How's that going to work for your joy level? (laughs) Not so hot, right? (laughs) So we have to be being filled. Learning to follow God can make all the difference in our lives. We have to let, be led and follow God in every area. That's with our kids. That's with our money. That's with our marriage. That's like You're not getting out of this in any area of your life. This is the path and the journey set before us, so we might as well learn how to do it. It's actually the greatest adventure that you'll ever have. The kingdom of God has a currency. I'm going somewhere with this, so let me build my case, okay? So the kingdom of God has a currency. Does anybody know what that currency is? And don't say the yen. Oh, so good back there. That's right, it's faith. The kingdom of God has a currency, and the currency is faith. Just like your worldly system has a monetary currency by which all things are accomplished, or pretty much everything, God's currency is faith, and nothing works in his kingdom without it. And sometimes you're like, really? 
<laughs> like, just kind of want to relax for a minute, you know? But no, we are to go from faith to faith and glory to glory. And how do we do it? Going from faith to faith. And he's always wanting to increase you in that area because the more you can believe for, the more he can get through you to others. Amen? So Hebrews 11.6 has this at a Bible college teacher that used to walk around and quote this. I can literally see and hear him in my head every time I read the verse because it was every single class. Like, if you didn't learn anything, you came out with that scripture. So Hebrews 11.6 says this, but without faith, it's impossible to please and be satisfactory to him. For whoever would come near to God must believe that God exists and that he's a rewarder to those who earnestly and diligently seek him. So just like you use your faith to trust God maybe for healing or for finances, let's say you get a bad diagnosis. You're like, all right, I'm going to go out my healing scriptures. And you get them all out, and you read them, and you think about them. You walk around the house and say them. I'm, I've always written them on little cards because I learned by writing things down. So I'll have them all over the place, you know. We have to do that when it comes to to learning how to hear from heaven. Because the devil would love for you to think that you're like the only Christian that can hear from God. There's just something totally wrong with you because you can't hear from God. I don't know what it is. But there's something totally wrong with you. And he works really hard to convince you of that because he knows the power of you understanding who you are in God and how to follow his voice. That's, the, that's his biggest nightmare. It's a nightmare to the enemy. And so our goal is to be a nightmare to him, right? So just like you use your faith, like I said, to, to trust God for healing or finances or for a situation at work to change, and you feed on those promises, we can do the same thing. And really, honestly, it's, it's as important because sometimes in order to be blessed in your finances, you have to get direction from God to even know what to do to be blessed. Does that make sense? For healing, what to do to be healed. Sometimes there's a natural, sometimes there's a doctor you're supposed to do. Some, you know, this all works together, and it's going to require faith. And we constantly go back to it and meditate on these scriptures. I remember in my 20s, early 20s, I was struggling so much with the will of God for my life. I couldn't understand it. I mean, I'm super analytical, and I like to figure everything out, and I couldn't figure anything out. It really bothered me. And finally, I got a hold of a bunch of scriptures that talked about how to follow the voice of God. I spent a lot of time in John chapter 14 through about 17. I read it over and over in multiple translations. I even memorized some of it because it was, I just didn't have confidence that I was going to make the right decision. Surely I was going to make the wrong decision and ruin my future because I'm so powerful, <laughs> you know, which is like a crazy thought when you really think about it. If you're seeking to follow the Lord, even if you mess up, you got a GPS on the inside, he'll just reroute you, get you back on the hire. It might take a little longer, but you're going to get there, right? If you want to listen, you're going to get there. Amen? Amen. <laughs> so our whole Christian life, we're training that spirit man to hear and then disciplining our mind and our body to follow what we hear. That's the hardest part. Whether it makes sense or it doesn't, if you're like me, man, if it doesn't make sense, the struggle is real doesn't add up on the spreadsheet. It doesn't make sense. Why would I do that? That sounds crazy. And so I'll probably circle around that like a computer that's timing out for a while till I finally get my act together. So does anybody remember, and it's sad I have to say remember, it really dates me, but remember back in the day when they had radio dials that you actually dialed in 400 years ago? And like, if you didn't dial it just right, you'd skip over your favorite station and you would have to like mess around with it and mess around with it to get it just right so you could hear whatever you were gonna listen to. Well, praying in the spirit is like that. When you spend time praying in the spirit, what you're doing is you're fine tuning your hearing. You're moving out the static. You're getting all that other stuff out of there so you can hear clearly. Amen? I remember one of our um, teachers had told us He's like, don't ever say, I don't know what to do. How many times? I, I can be really bad about that. He said, always say, I'm in the right place at the right time doing the right thing. Those words are, don't ever say, I don't know what to do. You have a guide on the inside. Maybe your head doesn't know, but guaranteed your heart does. You just got to get it from here to here. And sometimes that's a long road for some of us. <laughs> 
<laughs> it's like, you know. So let's look at John 14, 15 through 18. It says, if you love me, you'll obey my commandments, and I will ask the Father, and he'll give you another advocate who will never leave you. He is the Holy Spirit who leads you into all truth. In a day and age where you cannot tell what is true and what is not true, where all the sources of truth change the truth based on their feeling or their political party or whatever else they're up to, we have to have the Holy Spirit operating in our lives because they can feed you whatever they want to feed you, but on the inside, I'd be like, no, I don't think so. Because he is what? The source of all truth. And even in more interesting, the world can't receive him. Why? Because they don't, they're not born again. They don't know Jesus. They can't receive him because it isn't looking for him. <laughs> and they don't recognize him. But you know him because he lives with you now and later will be in you. No, I will not abandon you as orphans. I will come to you. John 14, 23 through 27 says, All who love me will do what I say. My Father will love him and, we, and will come to him and make our home with each of them. Anyone who doesn't love me will not obey me. And remember, my words are not my own. What I am telling you is from the Father who sent me. I'm telling you things while I'm still with you. But when the Father sends the advocate, he's talking about the Holy Spirit, as my representative, to the whole, that is the Holy Spirit. He'll teach you everything, and he'll remind you of everything I've told you. I'm leaving you with a gift. You know, I've read this passage a hundred times, and I read it the other day, and I, I it's kind of sad, but I never made the connection that the gift was the Holy Spirit. But I'm leaving with a, a gift, the gift of peace of mind and heart. Well, where's that going to come from? The Holy Spirit. I never connected all that. And the peace I give you, the peace I give is a gift that the world can't give, so don't be afraid. So have you ever struggled with those thoughts like, is that just me? Is that just what I think? Is that just my head? Or is that God telling me to do something? Here's the thing. If we'll spend time feeding on the word of God, it'll divide if that's just you or your head or if that's really God. Hebrews 4.12 says that the word of God is alive and powerful. It's sharper than the sharpest two-edged sword. It divides between the soul and the spirit. Soul is mind, emotion, and will. And between the joints and marrow, the flesh that wants to do what it wants to do. It, expresses our in, it exposes our innermost thoughts and desires. What we want to do is be a good... We want to listen to understand. I have a child who... I won't mention their name, but they listen to like half a conversation. They'll be like on their phone and they'll hear like two things and then they'll pop up from the phone and be like, what? The world is ending? I'm like, no, it's not what I said. Go back to your phone. Why? And it's like this whole thing. I'm like, nobody said any of that because they're not, they're just overhearing or they're hearing but not listening. <laughs> we have to develop and train ourselves not just to overhear what God is doing or saying, but we need to listen to understand so we know his ways, right? And that's developed. That takes discipline. That's not just like half paying attention and half doing something else, <laughs> you know? That's leaning in and listening to understand, right? Um, for Romans 8, 14, I'm going to give you a couple of scriptures that you can meditate on to help increase your capacity to hear from God. So Romans 8, 14 says this, for as many as are led by the Spirit of God, these are the sons of God. This one's one of my favorites. John 10, 27 says, my sheep hear my voice, and I know them, and they follow me. You belong to God, and you are his sheep, not in the negative sense that everyone else uses that word. Now, <laughs> it was a good word, but they ruined it. But anyway, back to the Bible way. <laughs> my sheep hear my voice, and I know them, and they follow me. Interesting fun fact about shepherds is that the, peop the sheep that they take care of literally recognize their voice. And if another shepherd is there, they won't follow that shepherd because it's not their shepherd. Interesting, right? So um, I also encourage you to read John chapter 14 through 16. I like it in the Amplified. 
but it's good in all the translations. E.W. Kenyon said this, the one who lets his spirit gain the mastery and influence him in critical times is the one who climbs to the top. So gaining mastery is all about training your spirit to dominate the rest of you. It transforms your spiritual walk and it makes hearing from God easier. John 1.12 says this, But to as many as did receive and welcome them, he gave the authority to become the children of God, and that is to those who believe, adhere, and trust, and rely on his name. As many as received him, they are his sons and daughters. So to be led by the Spirit is to walk in every blessing that belongs to you as a son or daughter of God. And it's kind of like throwing a rock in a pond or skipping rocks. And if that makes it ripple to the shore. It affects every area. Led by the Spirit, we find God's plan for our life. We find healing. We find health. Um, Rob tells a great story about how God led him to the right cardiologist and all the right things to do to be healed. Um, but what if he just skipped that part and just followed all the rules? It, but God led him another way, and he was healed. He wouldn't have been healed. He would have had a bunch of other issues. So it needs to become like a sixth sense. You know how, like, I have one kid, too, that's like, man, they have the most amazing sense of smell. Even, like, at two years old, I'd be baking cookies. They'd be, like, way across the house, and they'd come hauling, like, are you making cookies? <laughs> or if we're making pizza, for sure they knew. I mean, they could be outside around the corner, and they'd be like, oh, my gosh, she's making pizza. Because that sense is very developed. Well, we need to develop this, like, a sixth sense, right? Don't go here, go there, slow down, speed up, especially right now, right? There's a lot of power made available to us when we pray in the Spirit. Years ago, we were um, getting ready to build out this Winn-Dixie in Oviedo at our old church. It was a really big building. We built out a 53,000 square foot, I don't know, it was big. So there's another church um, in Winter Springs that had already done that to another old Winn-Dixie. So we went and they let us walk around and, and see the building. So we walked through the whole building and it was huge. And I was like, holy cow, this is a lot. <laughs> um, it had tons of rooms. You could totally get lost in there with no, no trouble at all. So finally we get all the way down to the back of this back hall. It was kind of like storagey kind of area. And they open up this room and there's like breaker boxes. I've never seen so many breaker boxes. I mean, at least a dozen, maybe 20. There were just bo breaker boxes all over. It was literally a power room. <laughs> and um, it was just a tiny little room in that giant building. But that little room supplied the power to the entire 50,000 square feet. And so prayer is kind of like that in your life. It gives power to every area of our lives and of our churches. So if the breaker box to one area wasn't working, there would be no power to have a church service or no power for children's ministry that day and so on and so forth. Being filled with the Spirit activates the power in your life to every room in every area. Someone asked the question, if your prayer life was the power supply to the electricity in your home, how bright would your house be? Ouch. Would you be able to use that prayer life power to just turn on the stove and a light? Would you have like a little tiny night light on? <laughs> you know, that little tiny plug in the wall. He hates those. I love them. Sticks them in the wall, you know, and like it lights up a little tiny corner so you don't trip going to the bathroom at two in the morning. <laughs> you know, everyone knows what I'm talking about, right? Is that the amount of power that your prayer life would supply? Or would you just be totally sitting in the dark? So the power had gone out in our house. This was a long time ago, but, like, for several hours. It was during the summer. It was super hot. Man, I forgot, like, how my kids were little, too. I was like, holy cow, this is going to be horrible. How did they do this? I'm so glad I'm not a pioneer woman. <laughs> like, I have a TV and the washing machine and whatever for an hour, and I don't know what to do with myself. <laughs> um, but you just don't realize how important that power is in your life until you don't have it, Right? Praying in the Spirit is the power source for your life. Prayer is to your spiritual life what electricity is to your natural life. Have you ever watched those Energizer? Remember the Energizer Bunny? I think they still play those commercials. The reason that bunny kept going and going and going is the battery or the power source that gave power to the bunny, right? 
At some point, though, those batteries have to get recharged, right? Eventually, he's going to run out of power. Well, praying in the Spirit recharges your spiritual batteries. So many of us don't realize the power available to us with the baptism of the Holy Spirit. In the book of Acts, chapter 1, the Bible talks about the power to witness. In fact, Acts 1.8 says this, But you will receive power when the Holy Spirit comes on you, and you'll be my witness, telling people about me everywhere, in Jerusalem, throughout Judea, Samaria, and to the ends of the earth. Jesus told them they needed the Holy Spirit so they could have power to be a witness for him. Even though some of them were martyred, that power that they had was from the Holy Spirit to be bold. Remember Peter? He was scared of the little girl, wouldn't even talk to her. He denied Jesus three times. Little girl comes up, she's 12 years old. Hey, don't you know that Jesus guy? He's like, no, no, don't know him. Nope, just hanging out here, see what's happening. It's all good, moving on. He was completely transformed in that upper room that day. He went from being scared of a little girl to going out and preaching, and 3,000 people got saved that day. Same guy. And, you know, it wasn't him because he was the guy that was scared of the 12-year-old. It was God, right? <laughs> Jude 120 again, build yourselves up on your most holy faith. Make progress. Rise like an edifice, like a building, higher and higher, praying in the Spirit. The Holy Spirit wants to guide us and help, him, help us, but we have to be open to him. I love this passage of Scripture, and we're, we're rounding the corner here. We're almost done. In John 16, 12 through 13, it says, I still have many things to say to you, but you're not able to bear them or take them upon you or grasp them now. But when he, talking about the Holy Spirit, the spirit of truth, the truth-giving spirit comes, he'll guide you into all things, all the truth, the whole full truth. You ever want to know the whole full truth? Lately, I, I don't know if you're watching the news, you really are like, is that really true? I want to know the whole full truth. For he will not speak his own message on his own authority, but he will tell whatever he hears from the Father. He will give the message that has been given to him. He's just, he's a messenger. And he'll announce and declare to you the things that are to come, that will happen in the future. You never have to live your life unprepared. Now, I will say this. Depending on your personality, we have some friends. <laughs> there are missionaries. Man, that guy was a crazy evangelist. He would, like, stand on chairs and preach. He's, like, one of the craziest evangelists I've ever met. And he was young, too, so he had that working for him. He's, like, our, older than us now, and you know, whatever. He's not so young. But back then, <laughs> he was wild. <laughs> and he'd be, like, stand on the chairs preaching, and everybody would be shouting. And they went all over the world. They went to Thailand, and then they lived in Spain. And then they ended up uh, starting a church in Tulsa. Well, his wife was telling this story. She's like the cutest little petite thing, just totally adorable. And she's like, well, when God tells Russ, we're going the next day. So God usually tells me like six months, sometimes a year before, and I don't say anything <laughs> because things need to be prepared behind the scenes. You know what I'm saying? And the thing is, the Holy Spirit works with you according to your personality. We're just not all the same. Some of us need a two-year lead time. You know what I'm saying? Some of us are like, we'll go tomorrow. What do you mean? Let's go now. <laughs> Pack up the house and we're gone. Tire marks in the driveway, you know? And that's what I love about the Holy Spirit is that he knows, you know, God created us. He's got the part of the Godhead. He leads us, but he leads us in the way we should go. And he knows our personalities and he knows kind of what we can bear, like the scripture said. You know, sometimes I won't know all the details, but I'll just know something, and enough to like pull back from something. Like when we were getting ready to launch the church uh, last January, February, we were like, something ain't right with that. I don't know what that is. I feel like such a loser, can't get this together, but it just something isn't right. Why is this not right? Really stayed up at night, tormenting over like, what is wrong with us? We know how to like get her done. Come on, let's go. And I was like, no. And now, looking back, I mean, we literally would have launched two weeks before COVID started. But the Lord knew that. And you know what? He didn't tell me we were going to have COVID. That would have been nice. Although that would have freaked me out, too. That's probably why he didn't tell me. <laughs> so I probably would have really been upset about that. I would have been buying in and loosening and wasting a lot of energy, <laughs> you know? And I know that would have been nice. That would have been real nice. Next time. Next time we'll be ready. So 
God's going to show you things to come. And I love that about the role of the Holy Spirit in our lives. You know, it's not like you're necessarily going to get every little direction, every little thing. But he does show you the next step. And then you trust him with that, and then you go to the next step. And sometimes, I mean, I'm always, like, blown away by these pastors. They're like, yeah, I was standing by a river when I was 20, and the Lord showed me I'm going to have a church in Washington, D.C., and millions of people are going to be saved in my church, and I know exactly what to do now. I'm like, I hate you. <laughs> you know, it's not even fair. But he leads us, you know, according to our personalities. That was free. It's so much easier to be led by the Spirit when you're full of the Spirit of God, right? Just so much easier when you're full than when you're empty. Praying in the Spirit is like weightlifting. I used to do that. Naturally, the benefits, even from light strength tra training, are like really tremendous concerning your core and your all-over strength. And really the same is true about when you pray in the Spirit. It's like working out your spirit, man. Just like you work out your physical body, you're working out your spirit. You're building, just like that verse says, building yourself up, rising, making progress, making that spirit man stronger. So when your mind is having a fit, your spirit man's like, hmm, no, shut up. <laughs> you know? Go eat that cookie. No, shut up. <laughs> you know? So we, it's like into, you know, exercise. So even just a few minutes a day will strengthen that spirit, man. You are a spirit. You have a soul. You live in a body. And your spirit is the part of you that's eternal. And it's forever. It's developing and strengthening your spirit is done by praying in the spirit. And being filled with the spirit will help you be led by the spirit. It's not a requirement to get in heaven in any way whatsoever. And you can totally live yourself with life without that. It just will kind of be like that sailboat, like trying to do it with a paddle in the ocean <laughs> or with no wind. It's just going to take a lot. It's going to be a little bit harder because there's not going to be that extra power because power, just like we read in Acts 1-8, is available to you. The testimony, so when I was a kid, I grew up in a really, really denominational church. Um, you know, they didn't like to have drums at church. We wore skirts. It was awesome. Um, the ladies that sing, I called them the chicken quartet. They totally, they had the warble. It's fantastic. <laughs> and they always sang at the cross, like every Sunday. I'm like, do you know any other songs? And, like, if you came to that church, you'd be like, I'm not sure God is good. I'm just really not sure about it. Like, it just was kind of a bummer to be there. And, like, I could never look at my friends during service when the chicken quartet got up because I was going to laugh and I was going to get in trouble. And we would be giggling up in the balcony like stupid little girls, and I would be, like, like holding my breath. I'm like, just get through the song. Just get through the song. Because I, we all knew what each other was thinking about the chickens. Um, <laughs> I still remember to this day getting all red and sitting in the balcony being like, don't laugh out loud, don't laugh out loud, don't do it. Um, but the truth is that we have to be filled with the Spirit. It's not a requirement, like I said. Um, but anyway, that was the kind of church I went up, grew up in. And when I was in high school, I started working at this camp. And um, it was a Christian camp, and we had little kids come in all week, and they'd come in all grumpy and not very nice, and they would get saved during the week, and they would receive Jesus, and they would be like the sweetest, most awesome kids. By the time they left, I'm like, this is pretty amazing. And I really got on fire for God, because, I mean, you do that every week, 50, 100 kids get saved. It's kind of a fun environment to be in. It lit me up. So I came back to my church where we're not sure if Jesus was good or not, and I was like, man, this place. But I happened to have a bunch of friends that were filled with the Spirit. And for about a year, I was a cheerleader, not a good one, so don't get any grandiose thoughts. I was horrible. I don't know why they let me on the team. I couldn't even do a cartwheel, for real. <laughs> so bad. My daughter does them all the time. I can't even, I could never even do one. So anyway, um, we, my two friends that were like some of my best friends, prayed for me for an entire year, never told me that they were praying that I'd get filled with the Spirit. I probably would have yelled at them if they did, so that's why they didn't tell me. And so they prayed for me for an entire year. My senior year, I got filled with the Spirit. We started going to this church, and man, those people were crazy. I did not know what to do with that with my little conservative denominational self. I was like, whoa, what's going on here? I don't know what this is, but I kind of like it. <laughs> They were so on fire for God. 
And I was like, they seem happy. <laughs> this is good. Because at my church, they really didn't. And I was like, God is good. Like, what's up with this, people? They were happy. They were happy to be at church. They actually liked it. I was like, this is interesting. So we just kept going back. I went to youth group with them. And then we dragged my parents there. And my parents have been in that church for 22 years. And I was like, this is not going to go well. They started going back. They're like, I don't know what this is, but we're going to just keep going back to this church. And I mean, when I say crazy, it was a little crazy. It really was. But Jesus was there, and the presence of God was there, and I wanted whatever that was, even though I completely didn't understand it and really wasn't sure what to do about some of it. And so for me, it made a huge difference in my life. Um, It's equipment for your journey. And I know, um, you know, I grew up memorizing the Bible. I went to Christian school. I could, mem- I could quote Psalms 91, Psalms 23, because they made me learn it. It was required. I could do all those things. But I remember after I got filled with the Spirit, I read my Bible one day, and I had that verse memorized that I read. I literally had it memorized because, like, they made me. And I was like, oh, my gosh, that's what that verse is talking about? It's like all the lights started to turn on, things that I'd read for years and didn't really understand. All of a sudden, the lights came on, and it started to make sense. And there was revelation that came and understanding that I just, I mean, like we're talking, read, memorized probably 100 times some of these verses. And I was like, that's what that's talking about? I mean, I still marvel at that. So I just wanted to encourage you tonight just to be open to that. Maybe you're not filled with the Spirit, and you're like, I don't know about all that. Hey, I totally get it. I didn't know about all of it. Didn't get comfortable with it for a really long time because of how I grew up. Um, You know, super conservative. New England, like stuffy, you know? We don't talk to you unless you talk to us. We don't trust you. It takes a really long time. All that kind of stuff. But God... I'm telling you, it'll change your life. So I just want you to, to, to encourage you tonight just to be open to that. It completely changed the course of my life, completely. I would not be doing this. In fact, the denomination that I grew up, women weren't supposed to preach. And after I got filled with the Spirit, I used to have these dreams of me preaching. I'm like, what the heck? I'm not supposed to do that. But I, <laughs> I'm like, uh, how's that supposed to work? And, you know, that's how God leads. <laughs> you know, it's just amazing how... A life lived full of the Spirit is a giant adventure. And I can tell you so many stories, but we got to go tonight. So, or we're going to be here all night. Um, but as we close tonight, I just wanted you to, to bow your head and close your eyes. You know, one of the greatest things that is required um, before you're ever filled with the Spirit, you need to know Jesus as your Lord and Savior. He needs to be the center of your life your king and your lord so tonight if you don't know jesus or you have you don't have an actual relationship with him i just wanted to encourage you i'm going to count to three um we'll have prayer people up here after and they can pray with you to receive jesus i'm pretty sure um anyway so they can pray with you to receive jesus so i'm going to count to three and if that's you no one's looking around you can raise your hand one two three. You've never really made a real relationship with Jesus. It's just been about the rules, and now you want to know him for yourself. If that's you, raise your hand. Okay? We'll have another invitation for you tonight. Our um, prayer team is going to make their way up here. I'm going to give them a second to get up here. So if you've never been filled with the Spirit and you're like, you know what, I think it's time. I think I need to be filled with the Spirit. I'm ready. Let's go. I need this equipment. I'm not going to keep doing this without it. I'm ready to know things that are to come. Then tonight's your night. On the count of three, I'm going to count to three, and then I want you to raise your hand. And at the end of service, these two girls up here are ready to pray with you, and I can promise you, Your life will never be the same again in a really good way, the best of ways. Amen? So on the count of three. One, two, three. If that's you, raise your hand. Awesome. We got a couple people. That's awesome. Well, at the end of service, I want you to come up and see my friend Adriana and my friend Crystal. 
Uh, a couple of people raise their hand. If there's anybody else, you, you're still thinking about it. Come on up there, up here. They'll pray with you. What? Oh, well, Crystal and Linda, whatever. She was talking about Adrian 124. It's been a long weekend, all right? <laughs> anyway. Um, awesome. So we're excited for you. Um, for those that responded to that, that's just amazing. I'm going to pray before we go tonight, um, and then y'all can be dismissed. Thanks for listening to all my silly stories. And, um, and you know, if you are filled with the Spirit, I just want to encourage you to up your game, up your level, man. Ten minutes a day. If you're not doing it all, start with five. If you're doing it at five, go to ten. Just a little bit more, because in this day and hour, I want my radio dialer to work really good because there's some really crazy stuff going on out there, and I want to be able to hear clearly. I don't want to overhear. I don't want to hear, oh, what, the aliens are coming? Like, seriously, my kid would do that. I'm like, no, I just said I have to get broccoli out of the fridge. <laughs> <I'm> like, oh. <laughs> I don't want to be that person. You know, I don't want to be God's kid that's like, what? <laughs> I want to be able to hear clearly. So grab those scriptures if you want to get them from me again and just feed on that because we've got to be able to hear so we can follow in this day. I want to be in the right place at the right time doing the right thing all the time. And this is a free token for you or freebie. If you've got kids, speak that over them every day. Right now especially, my kids are in the right place at the right time doing the right thing because you don't want the opposite of that for your kid, right? Amen. All right, let's pray. Father, I thank you so much for your word. I thank you for these that are um, desiring to be filled with the Spirit. I thank you you fill them to overflowing and radically change them tonight. I thank you, Lord, they leave this place full. In Jesus' name, I pray you'd bless each family. We pray for um, those that are out not feeling well tonight, that you'd heal their bodies. And those with brand new babies, that you'd give them rest. In Jesus' name, amen. All right. Have a great night.